Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, day five for JPAC. So today we're going to focus a lot on specific topics that I've listed here. And we will also be joining the Skype group. So I've created the Skype group here and uh, I've also put it in the chat. You have access to the folder, all the members, so you can look at it in our documentation that we're doing for all the sessions. So join that group, we'll collaborate much more out there. Quick review team of what we did in day four. It was an important one. I'm sorry for being a little, um, you know, off or annoyed in it while I'm presenting. It's just I was trying to structure myself so that we delivered correctly team. And I know some of you are from an experienced side, but please team, um, let me make sure that you understand JPAC is a slow and a steady process. So it takes a little bit of patience team for all of us to get there. But I'll promise you one thing. I will ensure to keep repeating concepts. I've been doing it for over a decade now team. So and I know where we need to slow down and focus and where we can speed up things. And also the fact that our whole JPAC program will be broken down. I'm just going up. I think it's in orientation. Into all of these trainings. So if some of you are only interested in specific training, you could register for those webinar sessions and attend them as well. But otherwise, if you're someone who's looking at overall JPEG, then stay with this program. Okay, great. So now, can we go ahead with Selenium ID team? So what was it that we did the other time? Let's kind of take a look. And let's launch Selenium ID. That's the first thing I'm going to do. Now, team, to make things easy for us, let's stick with the pattern. Somewhere in day three, we were working. Stay one. Give me a second, please. I'll inform my Python team that um, it is 7.15 today. About to write it. Nice corrections. I haven't seen better corrections coming in. All these are coming very recently, team. You know, improvements in tools and technologies. So get geared up and ready for a lot of things. Okay, okay. So we did a few things here, but primarily for us, the focus was how we are working on one application and trying to understand that. And what we did in Selenium is to recreate the same correct login or incorrect login process. So how do we start with the team? Let's make sure that we all get the basics. Did I write anyway, seleniumhq.org? So primarily team, what we need to understand is QA, let's think of it as more manual. For automation, some of the earlier tools, tools were Mercury, WinRunner, and LoadRunner, and so on. And then came HP, QTP, which became UFT, and then came Selenium, and tools like, um, you know, the SaaS-based tools, and tools like Catalon, Robot Framework, I think I spoke about all of this. I'm just summarizing again. Uh, so there's a lot that has come into um, automation team. A robot framework and what else did I want to mention? A custom frameworks, of course, that we can build and so on. Now, the process under Selenium, we are looking at three main components. IDE is an integrated 
development environment it gives us one place to execute everything so for example if i take my application under test or just go to your three dots here you would actually be able to search for your specific uh, extension that you have or you can look at the icon that would be here it would be sct so i'm opening up the selenium id the new versions also there that have come up team i'm not sure if the latest one is this but please understand this it is not i'll underline this used in the market when i say market actual projects and so on more like a reference tool and reference tool and learning tool i don't think you need to look at it beyond that at this point and do understand that selenium dot dev is coming up with newer versions so the question should come up as to why is it failing to deliver and what is the alternative before we get there team we need to understand what is the power of automation and that is where i was talking about why automation so let's assume this that i have a manual test case here called test case 02 current incorrect login with all these steps now as a manual tester i can go in and execute them but when it comes to being more specific to teaching a tool team we need to enter certain details the ones in blue are something we have not yet started to work on it's something we'll come to in any or but at least the fact that till column d the steps are pretty clear for us we don't have data maybe i'll enter some data here random hopefully there's nothing there like that and some pass now and i know i'm expecting this message when it comes up now it's the same thing just to zoom in a little bit i want to recreate as an automation why automation is very simple thing i think we spoke about it humans may make errors machines can be faster and more accurate some of the basic things then we should also talk about why not automation they not totally rely on them lot of effort and money to build such systems automated systems and this is common to any industry not just it and all of this started with more manufacturing so we got to understand how we made a manual plant which was let us a manufacturing anything could be a simple box that they had to put together and do it all through human hands then they figured out a machine can do it so always they looked at the keywords the faster the more accurate and the more you know um humans fast accurate i will talk about a few more things when i come to uh, thumb rules team those are the basic reasons for automation now if my test case is so simple oops if my test case is so simple why must i automate in 
QA testing, we need to repeat our tests. And this is where you need to understand. I'll draw a diagram also. Old functionality. New changed. And this happened through regression cycles. Only once we understand what a regression cycle is, we can get into the selenium ideal. So paint. Quickly draw a diagram on this regression sentence. Okay. So, team, what happens is, you know, we've been hearing about versions of product, be it a paint. I don't know if paint has it. Does it have a help somewhere? I don't know. But if you look at, let us say, Chrome browser, if you go to the three dots and say help and say about Google Chrome, it will tell you this is version 79.0 this. Let me copy this if I can. I'll put it in pain. But look at that number team. So it is version 79. That means there's version 78. But someday there was version 1.0. Before this, this is basically the first version that we release to the market. Before that, we do beta. Oopsie. I'm going to the edge of the screen, it doesn't let me draw in there. And alpha kind of a, uh, versions before we come into version 1.0. Now, version 1.0, let us boundary it. And that is called the scope of it. As to that, okay, I have a home page, I have about us, I have a uh what do you say sign up not sign up i would say more like uh subscribe form and contact us that is all that i have on the application on a version 1.1 team small change in contact us so the whole thing comes as is home page about us subscribe in contact us we are adding a new field that is the change so when we need to test version 1.0 we will test everything make sure everything is good only then do we go to version 1.1 to the next one otherwise i'll not release it correct when i go there i have this change what is it that i test Yes, I will test that change. Okay. And should I leave the older ones? No, I will also retest the older ones. Each of these. And I will test the whole application again. So where we are. Repeating from one version to the other, repeating tests has to be done for unchanged unchanged functionality changed functionality and the holistic functionality. Think of it this way. Team. Okay, I have a car. Okay. Right? Now, in this car, everything is working perfect. I got new wheels, new tires, new wheels, the whole set. The tires and wheels are exceptional, the beautiful. My as the car is, it is beautiful. I will try and draw a diagram. I want you to understand this regression cycle. And I'm going to delay the uh, team. Anyone from Python, can you please, if you don't mind, act like that.
Where was I? Holistic functionality. Um, uh, just to show you a diagram, all right? Very bad draw. I'll try my level best. You've already seen it, so no more excuses on it. All right, there was my car. Now, here are my current wheels. And there are two of them. Four, sorry. Need four of them. Now I've got new wheels. So what is happening is an issue. They're saying, okay, my car is good, great. The new wheels are good, great. But then no one is saying, how does my car work with the new wheels? Does it fit? Is it fine? Can it take the weight? Are they too small, too big? Together, how do they work team? And that is why regression testing is very important. Extremely, very critical, I won't say extremely, very critical to do a complete cycle. So what happens is then, these saving them just like okay. in uh, Serenium ID, this one will take a couple of days for us. So we have this one. Um, holistic question vehicle do it on that side. Change functionality needs to be tested. It's the old one. And then changed functionality, new one. Very critical to complete cycle. How they all do that. So in this diagram, um, the main biggest challenge that will come up is very simple. Thing, okay. There are X hours spent for testing this version. And team, can you please tell me manually how many hours will be spent to test the next version? All of you? Everyone? Six hours spent. Tell me, please. Six hours. Manually. Would take what? Anyone? For the next regression cycle, if done manually. I'm sorry, team. No one. How long will it take? Are you all with me or no? Yeah, it's very simple. X plus correct. Exactly. There you are. Now I'm getting some answers. On. So I think we're just saying that if it takes five hours for the first one, it may be six hours for the next one. It will always be more. It would take. X plus something for the next equation. And that is why. Oh, this will not come here. This will come by your permission. I'm sorry, I'm having to take a little pause between my speech. Okay. So now what are we trying to say? 
now we're going to talk about selenium IDT at length and how does it work? So we have a manual test case. What is a manual test case? And this wants to be automated. So how do we automate? How can we do automation? And that is where a beautiful concept called record and run is there. It's there with Selenium ID, it's there with Microfocus, UFT, and a bunch of tools. Not any auto. Any auto does not want or prefer something called a record and run. But we will uh, slowly come to know team. I'm putting everything in bold as we go along, but I'll try and highlight it. That's what. How can we do automation? So that's one process team. Next is write our own tests using Selenium ID. We will stay with this focus. And I'm just going to say out of scope for us as to what we're discussing. Write our own tests using Selenium ID. Uh, without record and so we will not record it but we will learn to write it then we will talk about how we can use web driver with programming and this time you would get to see it both with java and python video. so python videos or uh, will be there for you by then java will do it again and together we can look at them the selenium web driver with python a programming before that of course we have to do a lot of element identification this is very critical one of the most important things that comes across um the net so actually I'm going to take a few more minutes, Tim, today um, so that we can complete at least something. Um, and then we will go to frameworks and then to CIC. Okay. So let's talk about record and run. So to record and run, I need to know what is the flow. So my flow for the application is very simple. Open Google, go sorry, open Chrome, Google Chrome, go to this website, log in, all these things. So what I'm doing is clicking on the three dots and you will be able to find your extensions here team. So if you search for Selenium ID, it is right out here, it is installed. If it is not installed, go to Selenium dev and get it from there. Seleniumdev.com slash downloads. I've already put the link also earlier. Now what we're going to do is we're going to launch it. So once it's installed, you will see it right here. So this is more like an add-on to the browser. It is sitting on the browser. It is not installed specifically on your machine. It is along there with your browser. I'm going to say record a new test in the project. Okay? I can also create a new project. But see, how are we going to do? Record a new test. And actually, we, we did some open and we, we did the project team. But let's record it quickly. Okay. Project name, I'll just say AA2 for now, any or two. And then base URL is the one it will take us there. Slash slash any or two. I'm typing too many wrong characters in this case. And start recording. So it takes me to the website. I'm maximizing my screen. Um, but actually, you know what I'm going to do, team? I'm going to split my screens not going to look great or beautiful but at least i'll have a view so i am going to go to login see it's looking at all this that is happening team and out here see every time i click click double click click it is capturing all that information 
we spoke briefly the other day about the command target value correct so it is capturing all of this information and which is not really necessary for me i want to enter something as a username and some junk as a password and click on sign in oh it's logging in sorry i didn't see that um moving along i thought it was not processing so it is doing its process and all the commands are getting noted to you so the challenge that you're noticing as you go along with this process we saw it the other way also uh will do more than you would like which is be clumsy for us to look at see for example if you look at a robot in today's world and you know so many robots videos we see in whatsapp and social media that comes up the saying they're doing this they're doing that and so on so you don't see if you see a robot which is so clumsy in action what would happen oh, it is you you only come to see the ones which are brilliant and they come through custom code so here what happened with us is it continued to do a lot of activities and let's stop this recording give it a name ec1 it's a different project altogether and that is when i can do a run of the test if i do a run of the test it will try and replicate the same steps and it is pretty successful at it where it fails are more conditions and so on but today what we will do is we will try and write our own test and the way we will do it first is with understanding the commands the target and the value okay then in target or under target we will do element identity now what is a command thing command basically is what we are asking selenium to do where it should do on the browser so commands like go to a url what do you do so same things so like you know, typical human commands example go to a url click link or button and type text field these are the actions we take in hence uh, yes right t and select from a drop down Uh, what else is there team radio button anything else page titles text fields There's so many things that we see correct so the way it wants to do check box here is uh, so for example if i go to an app, any other application mm. Let's go to maybe LinkedIn.com. And we come here, right? So the way for Selenium is all about what it can perform using um, a keyboard and mouse like apps so now i'm taking a new application team for us for our as a second aut let's take linkedin .com. you all have your own accounts so this requires one test data both 
dummy which is not hard to create then original yours for testing to use it and you do it but i will a few simple things like maybe sign in or login and so i'm trying to go to just linkedin.com p and then go to the same page it's totally different so here is what i'm seeing thing as i come in as a new visitor to an application all right so when we look at an application what is it that you can do on the application you do it using a keyboard and a mouse that is what we do here. so we see here we can select this text and copy it we can read it or i can see if this minage is here if i have a sign in button join now i click on it and i say um you know uh, no actually click on it and it will take me to the next page for join now or if i say sign in it means that i already have several things how do we recognize each of these objects in this page so a web page is built on lot of elements and we can perform actions on them they could be radio buttons they could be check boxes uh text fields drop downs whatever we have so most important thing is what we can do and where we can do. so command tells us what we can do. everything on the web page are web elements okay so that's a new application in the test now target is where should i do okay you want me to click you want me to type so what are we saying all this click type go to url type text where do you want me to that's my element language for this team there are methods to identify elements and what is critical for us to is get basic idea of a html page and then i would like to say talk about the methods this will come next all right now team let's take a little deviation there is a website called w3schools.com it has some amazing tutorials for html so does it have a lot of programming skills that you will require i like it personally so if someone can do a lot of self learning these are sufficient to get started and then ramp it from there but very simple to get started i want you all to look at this please that's one good source for it i also have videos on itlearn.com from previous but i don't know how current they are I haven't been teaching html for a while um on the courses hey the basics html i think this is it too and this will give you some good idea but we will play around a bit not too much i'm not going to take up a html page and all let's open up this page itself any other simpler page that we can get google.com any simple 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 page which is got nothing in it which is the simplest website you've seen team it's got nothing in the start nothing at all too much anyone recommendations no one gmail gmail if i go to gmail it will still have a lot of things i want to see all i want to do is right click so what we are trying to do is right click and inspect view source or inspect elements
not within the element of age itself. So for example, what I'm trying to say now to you is LinkedIn.com, here is a page. If you're already a member, you're signed in, you will see something very different, yes or no, correct? So this is for someone who's not signed in yet. We will be talking about in tomorrow session, user stories and how to write tests. So for example, this is my web page. If I right click here and say view page source, how did I do that once again? Right click on your page anywhere. Don't right click on images wherever you see spaces click on it and go to view page source it will give you the complete html code for that page it doesn't give you access to the data and everything in the back end because that will require you to authenticate everything through the process but it tells you how this code is built the structure of html code is very simple team html code is made of Elements. What is the first trend of elements? Okay. It's made of elements. Elements like um, it starts with a lower case, so it is then a symbol and ends with a greater than symbol. And what we call as a HTML tag is the word that comes right after less than symbol and then there is something called as an html attribute equals html value are the contents within that html tag which is less than example input id equals name Simple. I'm not putting anything else, and that's that's a HTML element. So what it does? A tool like Selenium basically Selenium looks at, and you don't have to know everything about what I'm teaching you. Today. Just the basics. For example, what is HTML? Not typically everyone would answer, uh, ask, not answer. Indian answer also not. What is HTML stand for? Whenever you have a question, do a simple Google, no? You'll get Wikipedia, you'll get so many things. It's a hypertext markup. So hypertext is basically, we're talking more cyber text, how to put text on the cyber space. That became the format for us, how we can communicate. So Selenium looks at the HTML content using something called this document object model. So it looks at all elements as objects. Now to identify them, we use attributes are used to identify. So team, we are trying to get to write our own tests using Selenium ID. We've already done a record and it will run fine. But we want to write, we want to understand what this is. Yesterday we saw what is open, what is set or you know, it is briefly what click does. We can also look at the reference and so on. We want to see what it does in detail. Ten minutes and I'm hardly taking any plans. Tomorrow will be much more in depth theme around the scene. Now, there are my methods to identify elements, attributes are used to identify. So, we're talking about the target team. Here, there are a lot of things that come up. 
primarily what is it that one we can use to have? We use what is an attribute? This is very good. Go back to my paint once again. I don't know what that is. So let's Team, look at it this way, very simple. Now today we're having a class of about you know 30, 40 people on the JPAC 12. Okay. And in this, if I want to address any one of you, all right, I could just use your first name. And that's fine. Why? Because my class is only 30 people. Now, if my class was 3,000 people, or let's say 30,000 people, will a first name be sufficient? Or let us say I use date of birth, for instance, to identify. Then, no, maybe I have to use a last name also. And this number increases to, let us say, 3 million or, you know, 7 billion. We also may have to do some DNA tests and fingerprints and so on. So for me, I need to know only one thing. The easiest way to identify an element in a web page. So for me, right now, which one is, is my application? Is it not going? Let me close everything else. Oh, there we are. You open the page source. So all of this is content for each of these elements. Team. So view source will show you everything. Points to every, uh, to the entire HTML source code. Then there's something called inspect element. One element in focus. Now, when I talk about, let us say, let me click on sign or join now. And I have this field here. So if I want to view the whole HTML page of this, I'll right click and say view page source. And though it's very helpful to look at, if you put it into a better editor, it will show you a lot of things. And sometimes we use a lot of just JavaScript and so on good things. If I right click on that specific element and say inspect, it will take me to the place in the code where there is data for that information. For example, if you see this is email here. So if I right click this word called email and say inspect, it has gone about this. I take my mouse here, it is pointing to that code. So see password here says six or more eight characters. I'm going to do a trick here. I'll make it 12 or more eight characters. It is changed here. This tool is more used by developers uh, UI, UX, and overall app development. So that's where they focus a lot. They will speak about, you know, what what should I have here? What is the width of it? How should the corners be? How should the CSS be? We'll come to some of those basics later. But the whole idea is how do we identify? <coughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> So now if I need to identify this specific field here, I right click on that and say inspect. 
that will show me the part of the code that is responsible for what you see or what you get from this. So you can right click on this and just say copy the entire HTML, outer HTML. Just say copy outer HTML. What did I do once again? I click inspect and then go where that is highlighted in the code. Right click and say copy outer HTML. Take it to a notepad. Now you would see that entire, this is the entire HTML element. I could decide how things will change here. The same thing now for that email. Sorry, remember password 12 or more, we changed it. I'll right click, inspect, it will take me there. And I can always cross check what is being highlighted. Copy outer HTML and get this. Now, if anyone wants to learn automation, you need to master this very, very well. You will not master it in one day or one week. It will take you about a month to master it. That is element identification. Now, there are different ways to identify elements. This is all. One is we can use something called as ID, name, or we can use something called as link text or partial text. I'm sure I'll forget one or two, but it'll cover most of what we need. We can also use class or CSS as a different one. We can use XPath to identify elements. We can use tag names to identify elements. What are all of these? So, for a human being, if I look at your database, you have a lot of descriptions about you. Look at this thing, very, very detailed. This is one of the most important concepts in our today's session. And it will become much more clearer for you tomorrow when we'll start writing our own things in Selenium. Every human has some kind of a property or classification. And every human has some description to it. For example, when were you born, your date of birth? What is your height? What is your weight? What is your eye color? Basic things. And each could be different for each human. And that is how we know that each of us are different. Otherwise, we may all look the same. Unless we do some detailed things like DNA tests. So these properties help us to differentiate. If I don't know your name in a group, I would say maybe the gentleman who's there sitting in the last corner or you know the lady holding a cup here, the side, some kind of a uh, reference will have to give to it. So that process of identification is very important. So if I know there is these are all the different attribute attributes and element identification. It's definitely my keyboard. I'm referring. I'm pretty good at my typing. I used to feel uh, proud of it. I should say, of late, it's been skipping it. Let me try. Okay, attributes and element identification. So what does this mean? What we wrote here, input class, this. So if I look at it and divide this, this is how it is. And I will write something similar and you'll understand it very, very clearly. All of this is one. I told you it starts with less than, it ends with greater than. Whatever comes after it is the type of that element. So, for example, if I have to create something for a human, I'll say human, and then I'll talk about a few things. Gender equals male. Okay, good. Next, height equals 
175. Let us say I know already what. Then what else? Age equals 25. Now this becomes a description for a human. Now see. How is this human different from this human? Is that this is male? This is a female. He is a male, she's a female. And that's enough to distinguish. Now, how about these two items? There's a label, something called label, and there's something called class. See how I'm dividing it in? All of this. Look at what I'm doing. I'm structuring it. Actually, this should be here. This is this way. Now see, this is input, this is label. It's totally different. It's got something else for it. And these have got a few more things, it's got more properties. Why? Now, a human can have many more properties. But if I say something like, um, pencil, sharp, Wells, yes, working like it's still workable. It was no, and that's enough for me to describe a pencil for now because that's a purpose for me. I have no interest in its color or its weight or its uh, thickness and so on. So, depending on the time, this is very critical. Thing. Depending of, on the type of the object, the attributes or properties or what we can call features used to describe them are different. And that becomes a basic for um, what we're saying. Oops, object oriented program system where we are saying that. Like we look at humans, like we look at an object, let's also look at everything that we see on our applications. So now look, this is my input and this is for the first one. I'll do one more thing. Let's take it for the password also. Right click, inspect. I go there, I right click here in the code, click on copy, copy outer HTML and paste. The same process, what I did in front of it, right clicking copy pasting i'll be repeating this about a hundred times before we finish our webinar for our training so you will keep on learning along with it. this first time i'm introducing to it now you know what it is slowly you'll see. so now you see how these are different you will notice that they are almost the same see class is same almost same human type autocomplete little few differences here and there Required is again blank, ID is different, type is email here, it's password here, name is email address, name is password, place hold is password, see, and so on. This is what we have changed, six or more characters, we made it well, and value in it is nothing. So let's say if we go here, Value equals it actually won't show. So if I do the same for email, right click inspect, you have the source code downloaded on your system. So you're able to make changes. Understand that it's not making changes in the cloud version, which is the server. Uh, why am I copying? Which one? Value. Value equals enter your oh, come on i 
Mercedes, so it basically comes and sits there. And that becomes a property. It is like you're wearing a watch or you're wearing a cap to additionally identify you. Now notice, team, to identify this, if I say, okay, this is input, and if I say this is input, it is not enough. If I say your height, my height is the same, or you are human, I am human, it's not enough. The class also is the same. So we have to go for something that is unique. The first thing that we look at for attributes called ID or name. So primarily, if you find unique ID or name, use them. If not, we go into the other things. And in fact, what I will write here is 1.1 1 .1 is use copy X path till you must mention. I'm going to take two, three more minutes. I think I think you will be pretty upset. Oh, 704. I need to do this as well. Okay, let me do it. So, this copy is actually master. So, now all that I'm saying to you is for me to run this test, to write this test, we're going to do it this way. Okay, now ready? We're going to do it ourselves. So, let's go to Selenium IDE and we're going to say add new test. PC FN2. For me, the application that I want to go to is LinkedIn.com. Right? The first command that we will do is open. That is when it will launch. How do I know? You will know when you do a simple record initially. All these commands do some simple recording initially, you'll know. Then you start writing it yourself. And you don't spend more than two days. We will not spend more than two days, three days on to AID. We'll move on to it. Now, the target for me is I already have LinkedIn.com. I can just say forward slash. And it basically says go to the main. Let us test this code. Does it go there? There's a problem to me. It goes to my logged in page. How do I not go to that in Selenium ID right now? Mm, any old dot com works, but let's see if it goes to this one. Sign up. Is there a sign up link by itself? Let's see. Still going to my network. I think it's streaming with travel. This will be easy. All right, team. You know what I'll do? I'm going to do it on any auto itself because at least I know there I can do a few things. So here I'm going to open and go to Orange. That's the version actually. If I'm not wrong. For me, it's not the application that's important. Our learning to get there. So I'm opening it in incognito window. So I go to orange. Yes. So I'm trying to let us say login. Now, what will this do when I run this test? Come on, guys. I need to always keep myself logged out. Which is an option. We've done it in LinkedIn itself. Let me log out of LinkedIn. I will not know how to log back in. Sign up. Sign up. Then When I say open, team, I'm running out of time for today as well. Um, but one hour session will be good. Okay, so this is good. 
I've got the sign in. So now what I'm trying to do here is let us say that I want to enter something here. You have signed up, sign in for the full experience. So how do I type something here? All I need to do is go right click, inspect that element. And I don't see the code visibly, so I'm going to full screen it. Right click again, inspect it. Don't hesitate to do that. And right click again here and say copy this outer HTML key. It's not so easily visible for us here. So always get it out, put it aside so we could analyze it in a Now, see, I see name session underscore key. There's a class, there's an area label for us, and required type is text. Maybe name will. So all I have to do in the next step will be the command that I'm using is type. If I'm not sure, again, record or look at the reference. Set the value of an input field. That's the input field. I want to set it. Now, what is my target? I'm saying name equals session key. How do we write it? Let's go to the old test case and see. ID equals username. No single quotes, nothing or double quotes. So now I'll just say name equals session underscore. Now comes the value portion field. That's the next field. What do I want to type there? Some junk for now. And let's see if that works. And now if you notice, team, I've got the same thing communicated. If I would have done a record and run, the only challenge, one of the initial challenges is that it will record too many steps that I don't. Now let's try and replicate the same for the password. Right click inspect. I get the whole code. Right click again, copy outer HTML. I've not come to the copy XPath yet. Team will come late. I'm just doing simple ones. Right now. This will actually let us help to learn XPath and all this. Now see the name is session underscore password. So looks good. I'm going to copy this in. And the next step, third, is again I'm going to type. And so open, type, click. These are some of the most common commands team that you'll see. Uh, what are we? Where are we typing? May. Copy it. Remove the double quotes. We don't need it. May work with or without team, but we don't need. It. So we we'll say pass one two three. Now after I'm done with it. The next one is I'm going to click on sign up. So right click inspect for this. I get something else here. Copy out Still not come, come to a stage where I have to use an X path. So now see, so far you saw something called input input. As the word says, that is the place where a user gets to enter data. That's the input. And as the word says, this is a button because you can click on it and it will process something behind it, taking all the data that you enter into the page. So your button has also something, a label, it's got a class, it's got data, it's got so many things. I actually don't see an ID or name team. And we are actually in a little trouble because I don't see an ID or a name. So now what I will do is I will write an X path. I will teach you tomorrow. Okay, X path, uh, the basics of X path tomorrow, but a general X path for this. It will be button. And then I'll take one of this. This is fine. Class. Enter it. Class. It looks this. End of square. Pen. So if you're thinking, oops, this is bouncing, yep, it will bounce because I'm just doing it for the first time. But uh, for the next time, but tomorrow I'll show you how I'm doing. So here I'm gonna type correct team on a button. Everyone, and my target now is this. It's a total uh, X path for what I assume it will work. I don't even know. Is the command right, everyone? Team, you're not interacting. I know another couple of minutes, then we're done. So, okay. 
is the command right, everyone? I'm just informing my Python um, members that please. No team. Uh, see, if it's a web field, you can type on it. If it's a browser, you can open it. Oops. I moved something. Okay, and here it's a button. A button you're going to click on. And keep going back to doing a few record runs and see what it is doing. At any time, you can look at this entire library by C from A all the way to, you know, web driver, whatever it has. It is not unlimited number of team. Uh, it's just that, what is it that we, you want to see? So there are a lot of commands, but I think uh, it'll be easy. So let us say we talk about check. There's a reference also to see what it does. Um, and slowly you've got to um, evaluate them. So here it's a button, so we will click on it. Now let's see if this is working. If it identifies it correctly, it will work. And it gave me a message saying, hmm, we don't recognize that email, please try again. So my expectation so here is where it comes my test case is one login with incorrect data ensure we get the error message and that's all I'm trying to do to you. so I want to capture this I want to capture this, um, the one in red that came up. So again, look at what I'm going to do. Right click on it, inspect it. I've come to that error. I'm going to right click on it blindly, copy that outer HTML, get it to my notepad, also because I can see it in bigger font. And I have an error, I have an ID. I have a class, I have a role, and we don't recognize this try again. So here are some of this. If I have an ID or name team, I'm going to use it blindly. XPath, we're going to come to understanding how we create it later. But as of now, I see an ID. Let us see if this will work. Now, what is it that I want to do here, team? Please understand this. I want to verify if this text has come here. I don't want to type. I don't want to click. I don't want to navigate or open a browser. I want to see or check or verify that the text is there. I'm not sure of the command. So I'm writing again. See all of these commands. I'm writing it personally, I'm not doing any record in there. I want to text verify but I think like this, it won't get it under the right. Correct verify text is in there. I think see I see verify text. That's good. But before I use it, I want to see how it gets used through this inbuilt reference. That's there in our ID. Soft assert the text of an element in present. The text Test will continue when the test, test fails. So it's a plain simple one thing right now. Soft asset is basically saying that if it fails, my test won't stop. It will continue to happen if there are more steps after that. If it was not, if it was hard asset, um, asset plus, then at that point it will just come out. So I'm verifying text. So look at all that we've been doing. Five more, two more minutes, team will be done with it. This is what I want to do. 
this is where I want to move. This is any additional data, typically my test data that I want to put in. Here, all of you, that's my structure. So I'm, what am I doing now? I'm opening the website, typing, typing, clicking, very fine text. How do I verify? It's out here. How do I do it? Right click, inspect, on there, right click, copy, outer HTML, let's see. Copy, outer HTML, take it down. I think I already copied, this is the one, right? And I got ID for users. So I'm gonna take this. How do I know verify text will do? I just tried a little bit. If I was not sure, I would record and see. And in fact, right here, if it's recording, you can always um, see a Selenium command. Actually, get used to knowing it as we do it by experience. Verify text, and here is my target. Deleting extra. Be very careful with upper, lower cases, spaces, underscores. Don't give anything. To you. And verifying the text is here. Now everything good so far. Any problem in it? Anything that I didn't finish? What I'm giving the test are inputs to you. Use this username, use this password, and verify the text. What text should I verify? Who is going to give that information to you? Who will give us, except for us? So we take, we copy this, and we paste it back here into the value, and saying, I want to verify text here that it looks like this right everyone and now let us run this again it's going to be interesting to see the results it may not pass all the time the tail as well too so what happened we failed even we got to the so here is my log team. log is basically as i keep running through it will tell me what has happened so if you clear the log i think this is the one Refresh. Let me try again. Now it's running. Earlier, I think it had a little conflict. Wow, see, everything green means it all worked fine. Every step was as we wanted. So now we are learning to write our own testing. So the same thing if I say a couple more M's in it in the hmm. Right, this is how it works. And I rerun this test. Now, what would happen? Let us see. We notice that it gave us an error. So, my test is reliable. I am able to build confidence in it. And when, and team, I'm kind of done for today. It's been a long session. And we, but I'm glad that we could do little progress at least on one side. And when we come back tomorrow, we will talk about the thumb rules of automation. That is E for efficiency, R for reusability, and A for accuracy. These three things, team, we will take a deeper look. I'm not sending any links via email or anything. I don't know who is joining when. I'm trying to provide access every day. And some people join some days, some people don't join some days. But you keep asking the same questions. I'll keep sharing the same link. Here is the link. I've copied it. I'm putting it into GoToMeeting. Please kindly take it. Once you've all joined that Skype group, members only, I will also put it in there. That way you can all catch on to it too. And please focus more on doing what I'm doing at your end. I will not keep sharing the code immediately. I want you to write and try those things. Okay. Right, team. So I put the chat group, that Google Drive link. You will find. And what we will do is um, I'll see you back tomorrow, team. I kind of missed the JPEG, no, JPEG, Python session today because I won't.
Thanks, Mila. I'm glad we could finish this. Thank you, everyone. Bye, then. Tim, by the way, any questions? I can take a few. I have a few minutes. Anyone stuck with anything? We're just picking up slow momentum now. I think once we have an hour session, we'll make good progress. Any homework right now? That's a good question. You will come to mind. So, uh, team, as of now, do me one favor as a homework, please. Just get going till what I do. Download Selenium IDE and write a couple of tests. Tomorrow, please show me how you wrote those tests and what is happening. I would love to see it at your end. Take any application and try. For me, application is not important. Just our approach to what we're doing. We'll do a little bit more learning here, expat here tomorrow, and then we will get into half moments. Uh, no, you're not jumping the gun. Let me read the question. I might. Uh, uh, why do we need to inspect the image? Sure, very simple. Uh, that's a good question. I will answer it tomorrow once again. Let's start the session tomorrow there. See, it's very simple. It's like this. If I have to tell my friend to go to my home and pick up a couple of documents and get it to me because I'm out of town, okay? what would I say? I would tell, go to my home. I would have to give the address to that home. I'm not pointing to anything. So think of it like slide, nothing. More. So I would have to give the address to the home. Then I have to say which room it is. Then I have to say which cupboard that file is. And I have to say, of course, I have to tell him how to get into the home also. <laughs> in water. In which cupboard the file is. And how do we make sure that we get the right file? So I need to be explicit. The human can be intelligent. Even if I don't tell a couple of things, they're smart enough to understand. The automation tools are pretty dumb. We have to give them very, very clear instructions. What they can do, because they're not smart enough, is something amazing. And that is called this. They're very efficient. They can do much faster than a human can. And humans will get tired, keep doing the same thing. But they, once you teach them how to do automation tools, they can kind of keep repeating to do the same thing. And we may tend to make mistakes, human mistakes and uh, things that will drive us towards more, um, how do we say, we, we're not trying to be so accurate as an automation tool can be because there's no other thinking or process coming into it. It's just one single state execution for them. And our ability to teach these tools to do their jobs correctly is what gives us our um, career. Okay. So that was a brief question as to why we need to identify elements. Because I need to give instructions to Selenium what to do. And it needs to know where in the application it has to perform. Because it's it's not a smart tool by itself, it relies on our information. So we are the smart ones here. Too. They're faster, they can be reused, they won't get tired, they won't make mistakes. But in the room, the humans are the smarter one, not selling. Did I answer your question? Any other questions, team? Notes and documents I've shared. We will definitely take that when we do a few more. I'll try that out. It's very interesting. All right, everyone, that's it for my side then. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye now. See you back tomorrow. Thank you.